CataractCoach.com. Pterygium excision with amniotic graft. And we'll use tissue glue so that no sutures are required. Now, at the beginning of the case, we get some tetracaine, and we're going to put that on this Wexel sponge. And we're going to hold that over the pterygium. Now, the patient's eye has not been even prepped yet. This is before we do any surgical prep, before the drapes go on. We numb it up with a tetracaine-soaked sponge. And then now we can put in some lidocaine with epinephrine, inject that into the lesion, into the trigium. Now we did the prep, now we come back, and that helps get us some good vasoconstriction. So now you can see the extent of the trigium. This trigium is causing a lot of irregular astigmatism. So we'll go undermine it and separate that out, and that's very nicely separated. And we're going to cut it first, cut the blood supply off so that we can then peel it off of the cornea. So we'll cut the trigium here. Now, very important, keep in mind the spiral of Tillo. What does that mean? Where's the medial rectus muscle? How about 5.5 millimeters posterior to the limbus there nasally? And so you want to be very careful in this area that you're not going to damage that medial rectus, right? First, do no harm. So there's the whole pterygium. We've kept the medial rectus nicely intact, and which is, of course, considered good form. And now we'll do a little bit of cautery. So we're just leaving the trigium on the cornea for now. And we can just dry this off and do some cautery. Now, I want to stop the bleeding, but we don't want the, the sclera to be just totally avascular. So there's a, a delicate balance here. Now, obviously, we sped up the video here because I want to show you the whole case. But take your time with the cautery. We want just the bare minimum amount of cautery needed. Don't go overboard on it. We can dab those few areas and stop those, but you need a little bit of the blood in order for this to heal. And if you keep the sclera totally avascular and white, this patient may not heal as well as you want. So now we're just cleaning that up nicely. You see the trigium already, that we've cut the blood supply off, it already wants to peel off by itself. So that'll come off pretty easily. Now you can dissect further back and try to get the tentacles of the trigium as well, but again, be very cautious of that medial rectus muscle. It's a lot closer than you think. Now just using a couple of forceps, you can just peel it right off the cornea. So I don't need to use a sharp dis dissection on the cornea. We can peel that off. And I can use this um, crescent blade or 69 blade to help smooth off that surface and remove any little bits of material that are there. And we can also use a burr to smooth that out. But now remember, See that little white haze in the cornea? Don't think that you're just going to keep burring until all that white haze is gone. Because that stromal haze may be deeper in the cornea than you think, and you don't want to damage the tissues here. So now we're scraping it down to sclera. I want a nice clean bed there. I don't want any remaining bits of material. If you need to do a little more cauter like this, we can do a little bit more. And cleaning that up beautifully. So we'll use an amniotic graft, and these come pre-prepared. They come freeze-dried or desiccated or in various forms, and that's just going to help it heal up. So here's that burr, and again, less is better. So just a little tiny bit of the burring. You don't need a whole lot. Put a little more BSS there just to squirt it, and that looks pretty good. I want it smooth. My goal is to have it smooth. My goal is not to remove the white haze. You're never going to remove all that. And you can pinch here with the 0.124 to see if there's any little material that's left. That looks pretty darn good. Maybe a touch of cautery on that one spot. And then now, undermine in the conjunctival fornices here, in these areas, towards the fornices. And we want to make our amniotic graft fit underneath the conjunctival over there. So it's going to cover the sclera, but also we're going to tuck the edges of it underneath that conjunctiva. So we're doing a little bit of dissection there to create little pockets, if you will. And then once that's accomplished, we can then get our graft and we open it up. Now before that, we're going to do a little mitomycin, not a whole lot. And so I don't want the mitomycin directly on the sclera. So my advice is don't put mitomycin on the sclera. You can just have a little bit of touching here on the undersurface of the conjunctiva and then I just wash it off. So I don't put too much mitomycin. Less is better. Do not cause harm. Do not have a burn through the sclera. You can have a scleral melt from the mitomycin. So I don't like to apply it to the sclera, just to the conjunctival edges there. Here's the amniotic graft placed on the cornea. And then we'll see, we'll, we'll open it up and get it into position just where we want it. 
That looks great. Remember to keep the correct orientation. Now we can, again, tuck this underneath, like I showed you, tuck it underneath that conjunctival pocket that you made. And then we can use these forceps to really smooth it out. And now the patient has not had a retro bulbar bulb, bulb bar block. And in fact, I'm asking the patient to look in different directions, and he's able to do it very easily. So I'll pull that right up to the limbus. And now ready for the tissue glue. This is the fibrin glue that has two components. So we'll put the first component in here, and we'll smooth that around. So you inject a little bit of that there. This is the thicker one with the larger cannula. So that goes in first. And then we can just use these two forceps, really smooth that out and spread that glue all over, all underneath there as well, up into those conjunctival pockets that were created. Now here's the second component of the glue, and it's going to get activated very quickly. So we'll put a little bit of that on there, about an equal amount. And now using these two forceps, again, spread that around, smooth it out. I don't want any lumpy, clumpy areas. So get rid of the heme if you need to. There's a little spot here that uh, of clumped tissue. We'll cut that if we need to. And we want it smooth, smooth, smooth. And again, using those forceps now, you can see I'm just smoothing it out, getting it tucked into position. That looks great. I'm going to be very happy with this outcome here. Now we can put a little more glue here to close up those, those conjunctival pockets that we made, and those will stay in good position. This glue works pretty quickly. So put that in good position. Now there's no sutures involved. The patient's a lot more comfortable. And then we'll take a look what's going on here. So here's just a little bit of clumped glue, some maybe a little bit of the gra amniotic graft, the excess part, or maybe it was conjunctival. We'll just trim that off. To, we want it um, gone. We want this nice and smooth. There's that last bit here. Again, pushing that underneath there. If you need to trim off pieces like that, do so. Just get it nice and smooth so have a good result. So happy to say the patient had a beautiful outcome from this surgery.